we are again in sunny Los Angeles and we're at the home of Dave Fennoy. It's great to meet you, Dave. Uh, well, well, actually, we've met. Come on, let's, yeah. be, let's be serious. Okay, we've met a few times. We actually met two years ago and uh, and again last week at and The Voice. And we just spent some time convention. at Voice 2012. That's right. And we're Facebook friends. And we are Facebook friends. And that's something we can talk about later on because okay. I think that's changed some of your uh, perspective on the voiceover world. But we'll come back to that. Dave, could you just throw us way back to before you did any recordings? As, wow. as a kid, what, what was the seed? Was there a seed in your childhood that got you started? What, how did that all get going? Well, you know, uh, I, I, I think one, I watched a lot of cartoons when uh -huh. I was a kid. Uh, two, and my mother made sure that I spoke English properly and had me uh, as a child when we were driving down the street, read the signs on the billboards out loud. Okay. Which city was this in? This is Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. The armpit of the nation. <laughs> or it was. I, I think it's no longer the armpit. That might be Cincinnati now. Okay. But um, I, I think because my mom was an educator, uh, my father was a veter veterinarian, and they wanted the best for their kids. And mm -hmm. uh, so um, speak well, read well. So I got that uh, from mom and dad and watching cartoons. So I played, uh, I, you know, imitated, you know, Deputy Dog and all the, the popular cartoons of the time. Um, but I kind of went the direction. I was a theater major when I first went off to college. Okay. Uh, but I also played music. Uh, so I went to school for a couple of years as a theater major, major dropped out, went on the road as a musician, mm -hmm. went back to school, finished up in music, uh, got married, had a kid, and uh, realized that I wasn't going to grow up to be a rock and roll star after all. Okay. So uh, I went into radio. Right. And radio really introduced me to voiceover work. Um, and really up until that point, I guess I never really thought about it, considered it, saw it. Uh, it was a buddy of mine um, at a radio station I was working at, was leaving one day and, hey, where are you going, man? He said, well, I'm going over, to, oh, this is up in the Bay Area, and we were in Berkeley, and he was, I'm going over to the city, San Francisco, uh, to do some voiceover work. And I said, voiceover work? Yeah, and he says, I make more money doing that than I do on the radio. <laughs> okay. And I scratched my head and I said, well, how do you do that? Well, you know, you got to get an agent and a demo tape and, you know, voice commercials and cartoons and stuff. It's a gas. And I'm like, wow, yeah, that that's perfect. Well, I'd already been, you know, voicing commercials for the radio station. Sure. Uh, but this was even early in my radio career, so I, I hadn't done a whole lot. And... Uh, it was actually another couple of years before I started knocking on the voiceover doors. Um, and it, it took me a while to get started, but uh, once I got started, I was hooked. So how did you get started? Did you do, uh, did you just go into the studio and uh, do jobs or did you have any training? Well, um, I eventually got training, but I, I did all the wrong things first. Uh, I was a disc jockey, so... Uh, uh, the first thing I did was I put together a bunch of commercials I had recorded at the radio station, in the radio station, with the radio station microphone, that were all like uh, local retail spots, and put together like a five or six minute tape and sent that over to an agent who, uh, I'm sure when she heard it, Joan Spangler in San Francisco, if you're still living, Joan. Um, I'm sure when she heard it, uh, must have shaken her head, oh, geez, who is this guy? <laughs> but, uh, and then of course I, I was expecting a call in the next day or two after she received it and didn't get one. And I called and called and called and about a month later, somebody actually let me speak with her and, uh, she had me come in and, and take a meeting and she told me, well, you know, you, you don't want the retail stuff on there and, you know, you're, you seem like a, a nice young man and little bit talented, uh, come back and see us in six months. So she was like your mentor? Uh, in, in some ways, yeah. Mm -hmm. In some ways, yeah. So uh, I pared down the tape, she had told me to do that, to three minutes, which was the standard length at the time. I uh, got rid of some of the, the uh, retail stuff, uh, the more offending retail stuff, added a couple things. By this time, some buddies of mine had had a band. I did a, a commercial for them and a couple other things that were... 
less selly and uh, got the tape back to her and, and she signed me. I also, and I, I, I don't think I've mentioned this to uh, many people, I had my first voiceover lesson about the same time. Somebody okay. told me that uh, you should get a voiceover lesson and I was fortunate enough to meet Lucille Bliss. Mm. who was the voice of Smurfette. I mean, I think she's still alive. She's like 96, 97 now. Uh, but the voice of Smurfette in the Smurfs and, and tons and tons of other work. And we had one lesson, and she says, oh, you don't need a lesson. You, you're ready. Do it. Um, so I struck out on my own to seek my voiceover fortune. Marvelous. Um, but I... Got signed, finally, with Look and Joan Spangler in San Francisco, and uh, one of the very first jobs I auditioned for, I booked. Uh, it was a California lottery, and uh, I was still on the radio, and I became the voice of uh, uh, um, oh, you, um, uh, Marine World Africa USA for their concert series. I did those every summer. Uh, for several years, and I'd made up my mind that when I made as much money doing voiceover as I was making in radio, I would quit. Now, there's, we're, we're kind of telescoping down several sure. years. Sure. Um, also at that time, close to uh, 1990s, I guess it was about 1988, 89, um, a, a buddy of mine and I, who got in the business about the same time, we were both booking about one job a month. And suddenly he started booking a job a week, and I wondered what is what's going on. And uh, he told me about a class he was taking mm -hmm. uh, with a woman named Samantha Paris up there, who had been a voice talent down here. And I, I took a weekend seminar with her. She brought her agent Lee Gilbert up from uh, uh, up from Los Angeles to the Bay Area. And after the weekend seminar. Uh, Lee said, well, you know, you're really talented, and if you ever want to come to L.A., look us up at SBV, and we'd be happy to sign you. I had no idea how fortunate I was then. Uh -huh. um, and I went, oh, okay, great. Well, a few months went by. I was a morning man on KSOL, the number one station in the market, working under the name Billy David Ocean. Oof, why am I <laughs> confessing that? <laughs> but... Uh, uh, one day, as radio stations are wont to do, uh, they fired the whole staff. Great. Uh, I believe the date was January 9th, uh, 1990. And I called Lee Gilbert and said, well, were you serious when you uh, said you, you would sign me if I came down there? She said, yeah, put together a new tape. Uh, so I did. And in May, I um, drove down to... Uh, L.A. to uh, get representation. I should uh, tell you another story in the meantime <clears throat> okay. um, about how badly I wanted it at the time. Uh, a friend of mine, John Kafka, uh, I'd gone to high school with him, and at the time he was the cartoon director of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I got in contact with him and told him I wanted to uh, do voiceover, and he said, well, you know what, uh, Put together an animation tape and I'll play it for some people and, you know, maybe we can get you started. Well, I'm still living up in the Bay Area, but I did the tape at the radio station. Uh, this is before the firing and everything. And I uh, sent it to him and uh, he called me back a few days later and says, Wow, I didn't expect it to actually be good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really feel bad about sharing this with people. And, I, and we've all been there where, you know, you have the friend that... Anyway, uh, so he got me some auditions. But for the auditions, of course, they were in Los Angeles and I was in Northern California sure. Berkeley and this was not in the age of mp3s and computers mm -hmm. and the internet this is mm -hmm. 1990 mm -hmm. back in the old days oh, yes. <laughs> so I got in my car I'd have an audition say at two o'clock and I'd get in my car six hours later and drive oh, to man. LA audition get back in my car and drive back to the Bay Area. I did that three times. And you know how many of those jobs I booked? None. I'm guessing none. Yeah, none. Okay. None. Not one of them. Uh, but I, I still 
had a lot of confidence and I still came down and when I first came down to the uh, to LA uh, I was married at the time and a house up there I uh, I would drive down on you know a Sunday night or Monday morning stay all week and drive back home on a Friday or Saturday uh, I stayed with an uncle for a month I stayed with another buddy one of the Kafka brothers uh, John and Tom they were twins stayed with Tom Kafka for a month and finally I uh, got an apartment that I shared with another voiceover uh, uh, friend of mine from up north and we shared the apartment he came down from time to time I was there most of the time and and that's kinda that's kinda how it got started but I, I took the leap of faith and uh, Knock on for Mike, it worked out. Yeah, so that's quite a. Um, that's lots of interesting. Is the 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 connections, so it's the networking, the making connections with with people, and uh, and being very patient. I'm sure you were oh, feeling I wasn't patient. patient. I wasn't patient. At well, all. Um, I was determined. okay. Maybe maybe patience is the right. Yeah, determined and seeing it through that's what i mean most the um the antithesis being oh it didn't work today so i'm going to give it up yeah. so you you believed in yourself enough to keep going forward yeah and, that's... I, and, and i had uh, uh people that uh, actually told me i wasn't going to be able to do this and you can't do this and you're mm -hmm. not good enough and there's something wrong with your voice and I had a guy from gray advertising up in san francisco tell me well we've got enough people in voiceover okay yeah there's yeah, <laughs> we've recorded you're gonna get out. one more, damn it! <laughs> yes. So now you're you're doing a whole range of stuff um, from promos and games and uh, narration, narration as well, commercials. Yeah. Yeah. So is there anything that's particularly of interest to you? What's your favorite aspect of voiceover? Uh, I like the variety. Um, I voice of Hulu love doing that, but uh, I really like doing the games um, right now I'm, I'm doing the Walking Dead which is was named the number one game on PlayStation in mm. May of this year so um, I like it all I, I, I really do there's some things that I, I don't go after um, uh, audiobooks I'm not that interested in doing audiobooks although I like narration and long form uh, but not that long. Yeah, not okay. that that's, long. A, different you know, use, that's a different use of time, isn't yeah, it? You're, yeah. uh, I get the feeling you like the instant creativity and the. I kind of do. I, I think um, things that are you know under a couple hours um, are, are better for me. My attention span is not that long. I cannot imagine going in the studio nine to five every day reading the same book for until it's done you know, a month later or however long it takes. Mm -hmm. And you've got a very nice home studio here, which I, I do. Yourself. Uh, I do. Um, and I'm kind of a do-it-yourself guy, so I built a lot of this myself. Okay. That, of course, uh, it's a whisper room uh, that I bought used. I found it online in uh, Chicago uh -huh. and had it shipped. Uh, and even with it being shipped, it uh, cost me about half the price of a new one. So... Uh, I like that. Uh, rather than uh, put uh, foam in, I've got uh, the the uh, um, oh the, the Owens Corning 703. Okay. Uh, that I wrapped myself in black burlap mm -hmm. and velcroed to the walls, and it actually is a superior sound absorber than the foam. Um, I put my nice red carpet in there. You can see it's my nice swish. red char metallic chair in metallic there. chair. Very nice, oh, glinting yes. in the light. Oh glinting yes, in the light. Um, but but the home studio takes you. you we were talking about the home studio is taking you away from meeting people. Earlier we were talking about community and social media and Facebook. So how has that changed the way that things work for you? And, uh, well, you know, the, the, everything changes. Yeah. And when I got in the business, you had to have an agent. You had to go to your agents to audition. You went to a studio to work. And little by little, uh, people started getting home studios. ISDN became popular. And, of course, as the Internet has grown uh, and how much information you can send down the Internet, that has grown. But it, it took you away from... Being at your agent, seeing other voiceover people there, 
um, away from meeting people at the studios, and you kind of became a hermit at your own home studio, which I, I kind of am now. But thanks to Facebook, uh, I was able to reconnect with a lot of my old uh, uh, voiceover homies uh, mm -hmm. and new homies like you. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, we met on Facebook long before we ever met in person. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it, it really gives you an opportunity to uh, get to know people a little bit, uh, your, your co-workers, as it were, um, without meeting them. And you do have community. And I have found that I have learned a lot uh, from my Facebook friends who do voiceover. Um, they've helped me solve problems with Pro Tools, uh, given me ideas for marketing, uh, because uh, like anything else, you have to stay fresh, you have to keep reinventing yourself, you have to, you know, let the marketplace know that you're there. Uh, I'm amazed by the number of voiceover people who don't market. Mm -hmm. What is it that you do? You're a voice that markets products? You are a product. You, you have, have to, to market yourself. E even Coca-Cola advertises, and, and that's a pretty well-known brand. Well, you know what? Uh, <laughs> if Coca-Cola stopped advertising soon, we'd forget about Coca-Cola. Uh, public is very fickle. We don't have long memories, uh -huh. which is why they have to keep writing history books to remind folks. Yeah, just how special they are. Um, well, I'm sure you're going to be in many history books about... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're stroking now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's called uh, wine smoker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, it's very interesting to hear about where your road to where you are now, and um, we can learn a lot more about what you're doing daily from elsewhere and, and catch up with you online and, uh, and check in. Thank you so much for your time, and it's been a great pleasure to come and meet you in your home here. And well, thank you. It's a, a, an honor. I, I truly am honored uh, that you would come all the way from Istanbul yes. to do this. <laughs> we did indeed. <laughs> yes, it's nice to meet real people. <laughs> Thanks very much, Dave. Thank you. Thank you.